day for a celebration. Amen. Amen. Celebrate what God is doing in our lives and what God has been doing. And I forgot to acknowledge a couple more people uh, who are instrumental in serving in the service. Eli has been extremely faithful to be here. It's inspired by God, by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord. God's love for each and every person in the world. Amen? So it's important. It's important that we study it. It's important that we read it, that we apply it to our lives, and it's important to pay attention when we hear it. So I invite you to hear the word today. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Canaan in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told them they had no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mm -hmm. Stand. 
standing nearby were six stone water jars, and they were used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. So Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of the ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, Though, of course, the servants knew. He called the bride for all. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then, when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you can take the best of your man. This miraculous sign came in Galilee. It was the first time Jesus revealed his Lord, and his disciples believed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, in Jesus' day, a wedding was a big deal. And when I say big deal, I mean big deal. The whole village got involved. And the groom's family hosted a big party. And they celebrated. There was lots of food and lots of drink. And the groom's family were expected to provide that for the town. It was a tradition. So, <clears throat> if they ran out, and the main drink was wine, and if they ran out of wine, that would be a humongous disgrace. I mean, a huge disgrace. That had just happened. The wedding celebration, the wedding celebration was on its way becoming a complete disaster. Because they were not alive. And it would have been a disgrace for the family. In fact, if Jesus hadn't stepped in, the family would have suffered for years. And if the community would have scorned them, that's the family who ran out of wine. They should have prepared them. They should have planned them. They should have known. This is our tradition. Everyone in the community were looked down. In fact, that, I think they probably would have even lost friends. Can you imagine? I mean, the hurt and the shame would have been horrible. Probably would have never really been. But because of the love and grace of Jesus and his mother, that didn't happen. Mary called Jesus over. She asked him to help. They went out of mind, she said. I find this part interesting. You see, it's like Mary was saying, son. There's a disaster here, and I know that you can fix it. Jesus had performed in miracles that we know about. This was his birth. And a mother knows her son. A mother knows his ability. So Jesus is standing there and he hesitates. He said, this is not our problem. It's not my time yet, Mom. It's not my time to reveal who I am. And then Mary, and here's another part. Then Mary turns to the servants and she says, you do what he tells you to do. <laughs> I find that part of
that this family community suffered a huge disaster. They never deserved because of his love. So he steps in and provides the need. And not only does he provide just wine, he didn't provide just plain, ordinary, everyday wine, he provides the best. No one else has ever done that. Heard what the steward said? Those families usually provide the best wine at first. Then you have to care about his drunk brings in the cheap wine. <laughs> Not Jesus. You see, Jesus could have provided the best. Out of his love, he provided the best wine. And he provided his best love. Not only for that family, not only for the community, but for us too. He provided that best love and continues to provide that best love for all who come to know him and all who decide to believe in him. Remember it said, that's when the disciples decided to believe in It's because of the love that they experienced. He could have said no. He could have refused. He could have said, it's not time, Mom. It's not part of the plan. It's not time for me to reveal my glory. It's not time for me to reveal to everybody that I'm the Messiah. I'm the one who's come to save the world. It's not time. But it wasn't in his nature. He couldn't help himself. And the celebration of love that day expanded. The wedding celebration didn't end in disaster. Instead, it became a huge success. And not only for the wedding family, but also for the community, and like I said, for all who know the love of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly why we're here today. To celebrate that love. To celebrate what Jesus is doing in our lives. You know, if you come to him in love and faith like his mom did that day, Lord Jesus, this is happening. We need your help. Lord Jesus, that person is ill. They need your help. In some way, in some fashion, in some time, if we believe, he takes care of it. Over 25 years later, look what he's done. I can't imagine what he's going to do from here on. I know it's going to be great. I know it's going to be the best. In your handout, my secretary was looking for a devotion. It's what we call the church live. It's what we put our announcement and all that kind of stuff. And she was praying hard. She said, Lord, give me a scripture of devotion about celebration. This was the first one she looked at. Then she spent four hours looking for another one. Then she said, she told me to do this. Then she said, Lord, what do I do? He said, go back to the first one I showed you. I'm going to read to you today. And it's just perfect. Jerusalem's wall was finished in 52 days. Amazing. Nehemiah, Nehemiah made plans to celebrate. 
Nehemiah passed out assignments, organized the people, and oversaw every aspect of the celebration. Nehemiah took the celebration as seriously as he took the building of the wall because he knew the celebration was the final step of the project. Romans 11.36 says, For him and through him and for him are all things. Nehemiah realized the building project started with God, was sustained by God, and was for God. Celebration reminds us that every success happens by the grace of God. Celebration reminds us that every success happens by the grace of God. No matter what we're doing, thankfulness is not an add-on activity. Gratitude to God for all that he has done removes pride and opens the door to future blessings. Without thanksgiving, we would forget what is truly important. When we stop remembering God, we allow an unhealthy and false independence to grow. We begin to think we did it. And before we know it, we have removed God from our decisions. Our ability to make a difference is a direct result of Jesus, of his work in us. All of our success is from him, through him, and for him. So why wouldn't we approach our victory with celebration and thanksgiving? Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, you are almighty. You are our creator. For you created the universe and everything that's in it. You call it good. Sometimes we don't think we're so good. But Lord, you created us. You love us. And in spite of our mistakes, in spite of our life throws at us, that love never changes. So you promise in your word, nothing can separate us from your love. Sometimes we walk away. But Lord, you call us back. So today we celebrate how much you love us. We celebrate what we get to do because of your presence in our